Okay, so here's another um, Blender hidden feature video. This isn't really that hidden. It's a uh, an add-on. It's called Cell Fracture. And you just go to Preferences to uh, go ahead and turn that add-on uh, active. And then it shows up here under the Object menu under those quick effects. And it brings up this type of panel. <clears throat> and you can see you have a choice of source of ver either vertices or particles, and it uses that in sort of a Voronoi um, algorithm to come up with a set of cells that it uses to break up the, the volume of the structure that you give it. There's a source limit, and that limits how many of those vertices it's using. You can give it some noise. You can uh, scale that noise in X, Y, and Z. There's some uh, recursion, which means it's going to go in and based on what you give it for the random parameter, um, it's going to go in and choose some some of those cells that you broke it up into and, and further break up those. And then there's a clamp on that because if you uh, start going crazy, don't do it. You'll crash Blender pretty easy. And um, there are some other options there uh, as far as small or big random and the cursor close cursor far that means that it, the recursion is going to occur either closer to where that cursor is that 3d cursor or further away now under the next panel there's materials and you can actually set a different material to be applied to the inner uh, surfaces uh, you can give it sharp edges you can adjust the margin, that's the space in between the uh, the cells, and you can create an in, in, interior, uh, a, a vertex group of the interior uh, vertex points. Um, you can go down to uh, where collection is, and you can name a collection. It's going to take all those cells and bunch them together in a collection, which is kind of nice. So here I click the object, and I just use the defaults, and that's what it gives me. It's a nice even pattern. And that's because I didn't give it any random. But still, I guess it's kind of useful if you want to create that sort of thing. Uh, a series of boxes that's all uh, very uniform. But if I subdivide it and give it a little more geometry to start with, And here I'm going to go and just go ahead and keep it with defaults. You're going to get a really fine grid of all that, all those boxes. A nice little matrix there of, of boxes. I guess if you want to make a Rubik's Cube or something like that, that's an easy way to do it. But now I'm going to increase this noise and then apply it. And you can see it kind of gives you a neat pattern. It sort of looks like a Voronoi pattern. Um, if you've seen that, I'm sure you have. So that's basically how you would take a cube and break it up using the cell fracture into a, a bunch of cells. Um, <laughs> so I'll show you some of the other options there. If I have another cube, and I move it over, and notice I haven't done anything to subdivide that second cube. And I'm going to go ahead and parent it. I'm going to show you the option under the quick effect cell fracture. And you can use own verts, which we know what that's going to give us, or child verts. And I'll go ahead and click, and this is what own verts gives you. It's the same pattern that we had before, a very simple one. But if I go in and I use child verts, it's going to use the vertices on the child object. And you notice it's kind of strange, and that's because it's using the information from the child with respect to where the uh, parent is. So what you need to really do is take those two objects and put them on top of each other. So if I take th this parent and then move it over on top of the child, here I am, kind of. So 
So here, if I take the original object that has all the subdivisions and I add another box on the outside, I'm going to go ahead and apply the scale. And then if I parent the larger cube to the smaller cube and then go into the quick effect, using the child verts. You can see it actually does something when they're on top of each other. So you see the proximity of the child and the parent has an effect on how that pattern is generated. Another cube. And what I'm going to do this time is add a particle system to it. And then if I go in and I use the particles, it's going to generate a, a pattern based on where those are. Again, if I have another cube and I parent the original cube to this new cube, I can use the particles that are on that child object to generate the Voronoi pattern on the parent object. So here I moved it over and then I'm applying it and you'll see this gives you kind of the same thing that it did when you use child vertices in that the proximity uh, has an effect on it. So here I'm moving the parent on top of the child, scaling it up a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and, now that they're kind of on top of each other, go ahead and parent them. And then this cube that has no particle system, I'm going to go ahead and do the cell fracture, use child particles, apply it. And then you can see that it's generating a pattern based on those particles. Now the next thing you can do is you can use the annotation tool. And here I turned it on and made sure that it's going to be applied to the surfaces and I'm just drawing a pattern on this corner. And then if you go ahead and do the cell fracture on that object and choose the annotation option, it's going to use that as a starting point. Here I'm lowering the noise a little bit. And I increase the margin here a little too much on the first try. And I'm applying it, and you can see it generates a pattern. And there's an awful lot of space in between those objects, you can see. So what I did, I undid it, and then I made some adjustments, reducing the source limit so it's using fewer of the vertices that it creates based on the annotation pencil. And then I decreased that margin. And then I changed the material on the inside to, to one and added a couple materials to it. And you can see it generates a pattern based on that annotation tool. So it's finer there where I had the series of circles. So if I move one of these cells over and rend render it in such a way that you can actually see the materials, you can see reds on the inside and the white material is on the outside. So here's another option. If I go into you know, the edit mode and subdivide it a few times, take this cube and then go to the object quick effects cell fracture. And now I'm gonna show you what the recursion does. So if I move that up to one and go ahead and uh, let's keep it at one. I bring the noise up. 
you can see there there's a second round where it's going to some of the cells that it created and further reducing those down into a bunch of cells. So here I do it uh, with the recursion set to two and you can see that when it's through some of those uh, recursively uh, broken up pieces of cells are themselves broken up into smaller pieces so it gives you a nice little effect. Now the last thing I wanted to show is uh, what you can do adding some of the rigid body constraints that I have in another video with this. So I have a cube and I move a plane down and what I'm going to do, I'm going to treat these all as rigid bodies. And you've probably seen this before. You have a object and I go to quick effects, cell fracture, I'm going to break it up, give it some Maybe set recursion to one, go ahead and give that a try, put it in a collection, and I have these this object. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go, gonna go ahead and uh delete that first cube so I just have all these. And then I grab them and let's see, if I go to rigid body, I don't have the selection. Let me select one of these cells. So that's the active object. And if I go for the here, I can make them all rigid body, active. And then if I go to the object menu down to rigid body, I can copy from active. And you can see the other objects are active as well. And the plane's passive, so when you drop it, they, it just shatters when it hits the, the plane. But the other thing you can do is you can go ahead and select all of these and then go to rigid body and once they're rigid bodies you can hit this uh, connect option and you have all these options these are the same as the options that are in the rigid body constraints here's the location options I'm going to choose uh, selected for that and then the connection pattern you can either have them I guess selected to the active object, but I'm going to do chain by distance so they kind of uh, are chained based on where they are in proximity to each other. Let's go ahead and select all of these. And I pick one and you can see it's a fixed rigid body constraint over here on the right. And because it's fixed, when it drops, they're all fixed to each other, so nothing happens. But you can use this breakable option if I click that on and drop it and nothing's still happening but what you can do is adjust the threshold there and you can see one of the pieces comes falling off now why is it just one piece um, you notice there's an active object there and Yeah, it still doesn't want to come apart. Now, why is that? So the thing is, if I click on another one, it's not breakable. And what you can do, if they're all selected, if you hold down the Alt key and then make changes, and you can see here it highlights bluish um, for the threshold, then it applies to everything that's selected. So all those constraints are changing to breakable with a threshold, as I set it there. So you can see some of them break apart, and some of them don't. They stick together. So that's another thing you can do, um, kind of putting pieces of different things together here. So if you like it, uh, please click like or subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, thanks.